Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Rio Macroeconomics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Rio Macro. Don't forget to come down and subscribe. Alrighty, so let's get started. Um, so what's going on in the markets? Well, you had a big down day initially on Friday, and then you had a big reversal. Um, I mean, the uh, ARC uh, IPO were down 7, 8, 9, 10 percent. Uh, at one point, and then they came back and uh, they miraculously <laughs> uh, recuperated, which was fascinating. I, I looked away and came back, and I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't trade them, so it didn't matter to me, but um, again, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really kind of screwed up uh, the way the markets are behaving. Now, I have the thesis that if the market is going to go down, it needs time. It needs to prepare for it to go down, and you know, if we, as long as we don't make new highs, um, and we can make a slightly higher high, but as long as we don't make a, a new high, the possibility that we start to go down increases. Okay. Now, if you listen to Aunt Yellen, she's going to tell you, no, interest rates are rising because the economy is improving. Well, how the fuck is the economy improving? Uh, we had 50 weeks plus of uh, unemployment claims above 700,000. 50, 50 weeks. Uh, you look at the employment, right? It's 57.5. Where's the fucking improvement? I don't see the improvement. If you look at the unemployment rate, right? So, well, it's uh, 6.2 instead of 6.3. Yes, but, you know, that doesn't account for the long-term unemployment you see normally that doesn't matter that normally doesn't matter because you're going to get some ups in long-term unemployment some down some summer and people try to use that as a political you know tool to to fuck with people but this time around it's not the same thing you are having significant increases in long-term unemployment so if and yelling is telling you well the economy is improving well how the fuck is it improving if the um, uh, if long-term unemployment is rising. And why are you passing $1.9 trillion in stimulus? <laughs> you, you can't have it both ways and always. It's really fascinating to sit here and watch this because the everyday person doesn't understand what's going on. They're just like, oh, yeah, okay, well, things are improving. You know? Um, so, you know, again, MMT is a complete failure complete failure and i told you that uh government deficits are only end up in savings bubble and savings bubble is going to push up asset prices and that's what we have seen now the question becomes the question is going to become this week are we near um or beyond the 50 percent stimulus and near the end or uh, are we somewhere in the middle Meaning there's going to be a lot more stimulus to come in the form of a Green New Deal or another one in September that they're going to talk about another stimulus then uh, and so forth. That's the question. And it's not even if that happens. Forget about that. It's what the market believes. It's what the market believes. So, again, interest rates rising in of themselves is not the big problem. It's the speed at which they're rising that is the problem. And the other problem is that it's causing, it's causing uh, compression. And what is compression? Well, when the when the earnings yield and the and the bond yields are starting to compress, you saw we reached as high as 1.62 uh, on Friday, and then it started to kind of level off uh, at 1.56. And then you look at the earnings yield, which is 2.56. Well, you got about 1% difference. The only difference is that stocks are quote unquote more risky than uh, bonds okay so and and also the earnings are after tax and uh, bond yield uh, interest income is pre-taxed so you know again you, you start getting that compression market is going to start having difficulties and I've said that for a very long time uh, so we need to see what's going to happen now the Fed is coming out and everybody expected Operation Twist, which is they'll stop buying short-term bonds and they're going to start buying longer-term bonds. 
but that creates uh, a, another problem in of itself. And what problem does it create? Well, if you notice the spread between the 10 and the 2 years, okay, you're going to see that the 10 year yield is higher than the 2. This is the spread. They 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 give you uh your in your savings a 2 year or less uh interest payment and then they pay out and then they receive from loans the 10 and 20 and 30 year. Okay? Uh so the spread between them is where they make their money. And as you can see that even if you go back to 1989 uh, 2008 was the highest, and now it's the highest it's ever been again. Well, no, I shouldn't say ever because I can't see before that, but you get the point, right? So it's the highest. So if it start, if the Fed starts to to buy the 10-year and let the two-year run, you're going to have compression, and this compression makes it less profitable for banks to lend. And then the banks are going to take a shit. And the, the vast majority of money is created by banks. Right? So you don't, want, you don't want to fuck with that. You want the banks to do most of the lending and create most of the, uh, of the money instead of deficits. But on the other hand, if the market starts to tank, and we know that, you know, uh, the Fed wants the, the wealth effect feeling uh, of the stocks going higher... Well, it's going to be screwed, and it's going to have to bow to the will of the market. Uh, and it's going to have to do Operation Twist or whatever else is going to increase QE. I don't know what the hell it's going to do. But you, you, you end up with this catch-22. You end up with this l really weird kind of decision-making. And, and you only get to this point is when you are not doing shit the right way. That's how we ended up here. Now, the difference between 2008 was that it was a gradual, more profitable for the banks. And this time it was sharp. It was very, very sharp. Okay, so again, economies recover when the economy recovers. Don't listen to these incubator economists that, oh, you know, if we increase stimulus and if we do, uh, you know, support for the people and all this stuff, that's, that's just storytelling. And the best economists are storytellers that's what they are because they take something that inevitably is going to happen anyway when the economy is ready to recover it recovers and then take credit for it for for for, for deficit spending for creating all this this chaos uh and and funding basically the top five percent because that's where all deficits end up in the top five percent and then you start getting asset price inflation and it's never been as pronounced as it is today Think about it. With this 1.9 trillion, we're up to five trillion dollars in deficits for 2021. Okay, five trillion dollars. That's 25 percent of GDP. That's a fucking shitload of money. That's an extraordinary amount of money. Okay, and uh, it creates problems. Remember, there's a lot of moving parts. Like you look at oil right now. Why is oil at 67 dollars? Why? There's no reason for it to be. Dollars going up, interest rates are going up. Why would you own a commodity like oil? They pays you no interest. Okay. Same thing with gold. Pays you no interest. Same thing with Bitcoin. Pays you no interest. Right. Base metals, agriculture, pays you no interest. Why would you own any of them with interest rates rising? When you can just go buy a bond and earn at least 1.5% right now. You see what I'm saying? Doesn't make sense dollar going higher why why is the dollar going higher well because people are you know buying they need to buy dollars to go buy uh bonds they're not buying enough of them because it's not pushing interest rates down but uh, there there is that uh, bias there then you look at the 10 year even if you buy the 10 year at 1.56 percent okay sorry this is unemployment even if you buy it you still Losing to inflation 0.66 percent. Okay, still negative interest rates. It wasn't issued at negative interest rates. Important to understand. It's just uh, the interest rate that you're getting is uh, is less than what inflation is. So you're actually still going to lose money. Uh, so technically, you can say, well, okay, commodities are still good. Yeah, but when you look at the chart of commodities, when you take a little peek there. Okay, here's a the dollar, by the way. Okay, 
it was a bear flag we're incredibly bullish we expected this to go higher as interest rates rise um where is the uh let, 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 let me see it all right so here here we are okay so here are commodity prices right up against this resistance area now it's completed the one two three down it's a valid structure everything looks great uh but it's it's been a straight shot since the bottom here in april 2020 straight shot up now it needs to correct it needs to correct okay it needs some consolidation and then push higher that i can see uh but at, at, at this point um if this continues higher at a rapid speed this can really get out of control very very quickly because again you're gonna you, there's no way that earnings are gonna the, the earnings are gonna rise just as as fast as interest rates at, at the pace it's going and again it's the speed that matters right so we end up with a snap moment uh, so when you look at the markets and the money the way it's flowing and that's that's hopefully what you know I, I can show you guys today and you really have to you have to come up with different ways to look at the markets uh, for example I, I cared a lot more about economics prior to COVID, prior to the recession because any kind of you know um, weakness that would indicate that the economy is going into a recession would naturally send the the stock market lower uh, the difference is that this time around there was so much fuckery that came in with the lending programs from the central bank from qe that came in fast and furious uh from um uh, uh from deficits to you you name it the the downturn was only 33 days 33 days it takes years for markets to recover and it took 33 days okay so obviously the stock market doesn't give a shit about markets or economies and it doesn't care about the economy it just cares how much money you're going to print and again i come back to the same question are we in the latter 50 percent or the middle 50 or middle or prior to the lower end of the 50 percent of stimulus i i don't know we're going to see what the market thinks this week. So um, let, let, me, let me get back to this. So where is money flowing? Well, let's see the cycle that we went through. The first cycle was the tech companies really kicked ass. They just exploded to the upside. Zoom, uh, Amazon, right? All the, the, all the money flowed into there. Okay, it was safe. Fair enough. The next phase that we saw was that shitty stocks started to uh, when I mean shitty, I mean airlines, uh, cruise liners, car rentals, you know, the, the beaten up stocks started to perform. Now, again, typically what happens is the reverse, is that shitty stocks start to bottom and start to go up. Nobody believes them. Okay. And then the broader market and the market leaders come into play. That's typically what happens. It, it's, it hasn't been this way this time around, obviously. So it's a little bit suspect, <laughs> okay? It's a little bit suspect. And, and, and again, I, I point to the, I point to the, to the VIX. If you if you look at the VIX, the way it's performed, and I posted this. Let me find it here. I have it somewhere here. Uh, if you're not on Trading View and you're not following me, you're missing out on some good analysis. Uh, let me find. Uh, here it is. Okay. Look at the VIX. The VIX has not remained elevated. Uh, the only last time he did that was back in 2000 stock market crash okay so what is that telling us what's well, what it's telling us is that not even the market is trusting this rally <laughs> that's what it's telling us and remember that we went into a recession again in 2003 right so the market was still not not well uh, in 2003 as well so uh, so the market is not trusting itself so we had we had the shitty stocks like i said rally and then we had just to kind of go back and then we had the the meme stocks <laughs> for, for some reason amc gamestop oh we're gonna beat the man you know and they started to explode to the upside uh you had small caps just exploding to the upside with, with uh you know pe of a gazillion they don't even make uh, the negative earnings right the the small caps uh and and if you look at it um IWM and the X. 
Hold on, let's do it the other way. And the X. And you, you should do this always, just to see it better. Right? So you see that NASDAQ started to um, underperform, flatten out first. Okay, and this is back in uh, uh, June of 2020, about six months ago, more, more than that now. Okay, and then it started to underperform. So why the hell is everybody buying small caps instead of the big tech, right? Because they, they reached their their valuation or the perceived valuation, and then they started uh, picking the risk on uh, shitty stocks. And that started to boom. And again, it's supposed to happen in reverse. Uh, so you see limits everywhere. You look at oil again. You know, oil is up at this resistance area. For what reason? There's no demand. Demand is not there. Half the air, ha half of the fleet of the airlines are all grounded. 50% of all pilots are not flying. Okay. Even if you do get some demand, and we should, right? We should. Uh, but not as much as everybody expects. Why? Because the economy is so bad. People's savings are drained. Uh, there's still a lot of scarring in the economy. You're not going to go back to January 2020. <laughs> It's not going to happen. It takes time. There's a lot of scarring. Okay, so you have oil going all the way up there. You have small stacks risk on, you know, balls deep. You got shitty airlines and, uh, relatively speaking, shitty, right? All, all screwed up. Uh, and now we're starting to see another shift in the market. And the new shift now is into value. And I, I've mentioned this to subscribers for a while now, but there's a shift in value. So that's what we're going to look at now. And, and you know, it, it, again, you always have to develop different kind of tools. Like I said, I cared more about economics when everything was fine uh, than I do now because now economics doesn't matter. So you got to look at different ways. So you, lo you want to look at the money flows. I mean, you always look at the money flows, but, you know, if the economy is fine, money flows will take care of themselves. So... Uh, again, I'm showing you NDX IWN, and it's way underperforming. If you take a look at um, SVX versus the S&P 500, SVX is value. Value is outperforming uh, the S&P. Okay? Uh, and this, this bottomed back in September. Uh, value started to outperform the S&P in September. Okay? Uh, how about broad market eco-weighted S&P versus um, SVX. Well, you can see, right? It's starting to hook where the broader market is underperforming value, okay? Um, w when you take a look at uh, SVX versus XLF, okay? Uh, what you'll see is XLF is outperforming the S&P, coming up to resistance, right? Look familiar? Right? Same thing with IWM or NDX IWM or small caps. And then you look at XLF versus SV, SVX, and you'll see that the the banks are, not, it's not all banks, but there's a lot of, there's JP Morgan in there and Bank of America and Chevron and all these other ones where um, um, XLF is outperforming even SVX as of late. And it's break, breaking out, right? Uh, quickly, let me show you the the holdings of SVX, top 10 holdings. Berkshire Hathaway, value. JP Morgan, Walt Disney, Bank of America, two banks right there. Uh, Exxon Mobil, Intel, Johnson & Johnson, Verizon, AT&T, and Chevron. Okay? So, what does that tell you? Well, the, that's telling you that money is shifting to not necessarily places where they'll make money, they just won't lose as much. Think of it like that. So if, if you're not going to lose as much, does that fill your heart with, you know, buy the dip? <laughs> right? Uh, I don't know. To me, I think that's bearish. Right? Because the money is shifting into these big value plays. Uh, l look at GE, for example. Right? Look at GE. GE is kicking ass all over the place. Nobody wanted it uh, back in, uh, in May. It was $5. Nobody has wanted GE uh, since December 2016. It's been going down. And now suddenly, oh, yes, we like GE. Why? 
Why, right? They're shifting their money. They're shifting their money. So, you know, again, what's the message of the market? Where is money flowing into? Why is it flowing into there? Right? What's the chart patterns look like? Uh, here's an example. Uh, if you just take a look at SVX by itself, look at that. It's a breakout. Looks fine. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this one, right? Compare that. Compare that to the Nasdaq. Look at it. Much different, right? Uh, compared to the S&P 500. Not doing as bad because it's not so tech heavy, right? But it's not bullish. It's not breaking out. It's not all-time highs. What if you look at the broad, um, the equal-weighted S&P? Well, that that looks fine. That's near all-time highs. What about dividend-weighted S&P? That is at all-time highs. Okay. So, you know, to take a look at IPO. <laughs> Kaboom. Right? Broke. It was as low as 25%. How about ARC? Boom. Straight down. Right? Down to 33%. How about SPACs? Down 29%. Um, momentum. Okay? Down 31%. They got crushed. But if you were buying value, you're okay. Okay? So, I, the way I look at it again is that they're removing sand underneath the house, and eventually the house is going to collapse. Okay? Now, I've been saying that for a long time. Uh, I, I I never understood this la rally. I'm not going to pretend that I do. <laughs> uh, but I do have tools to kind of see where money is flowing to. I'm going to use that for now. Uh, again, I prefer that the market goes up a little bit, spends a month or two going back and forth, no new all-time highs, and then eventually just kind of gives out. That that would be uh, a much deeper kind of a, of a correction. Okay. So, again, you know, it makes new all-time highs. We're we're going we're going much much higher. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you look at uh, Europe, okay, Europe is fine. Why? Because they're considered value. How about the UK? They're doing fine. Uh, Germany, doing fine. Doesn't look as bearish, right? Um, so keep these things in mind. Um, again, this is why I posted uh, these uh, charts lately. Uh, this is Amber Crombie and Fitch, right? Breaking out. This is considered a value. It's not techy. Uh, it's not a small cap, right? Um, th this was um, uh, uh, given to me by Adam. I didn't find this one. One of the subscribers. And he was a former uh, BKC contributor as well. So he kn he knows his charts. Um, Under Armour. This is the one I posted, right? Look at that. right? Setting up, breaking out. You know, both of these need to correct a little bit before they, they continue higher. Um doesn't mean it can't go higher, but, you know, these are nice little bullish setups. And again, it's not a place to go make money. It doesn't mean you won't, but think of it as where you have to be involved in the market for whatever reason is in your head, but you'll just lose a lot less than, you know, uh, buying something techy. Now, you look at uh, China. China was kicking ass, broke this uh, wedge more, more than one time, right? Broke this one, broke this one. Okay, everything was looking great. Uh, again, it maintained this wedgy-looking formation, and now it collapsed, okay, down 14%, and it closed down 13%, right? But this is these are the this is the the index that should be kicking ass. They're the ones that are recovered uh, first, and it's not doing it. And in fact, it's breaking down. Okay, so if they're breaking down, then wh what the hell is the U.S. supposed to do? Because they don't wear masks in China, by the way. Okay, uh, you take a look at the fangs of, uh, of, of China, okay, uh, they're down from the highs uh, about 20%. That's bear market territory, all right? So, so you got one part of the globe going into a recession. I'm, I'm sorry, bear market, kind of. We're not there yet in the U.S., 
right? And then you have another part of the of the of the globe that is maintaining or making new all time highs, and you see that money is flowing, uh, is flowing into value stocks where you'll lose the least amount of money, and you're seeing that the high flyers are not doing anything. Even if you take a look at the fangs, okay, uh, where is it, fangs? There it is, okay. The fangs barely held on, barely hel held on on Friday. It broke and then popped back in, okay. Uh, so, you know, can you rise from here? Anything is possible, of course, as always. The trend is your friend, blah, 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 all this stuff. But... But there's problems. So we're going to see how interest rates are going to behave this week. We're going to see how the market behaves this week. We're going to take it one step at a time. And again, if you want 24-7 live updates and so forth, you come down to patreon.com slash real macro. Um, and you can subscribe. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. One, one day at a time. One step at a time. And... Um, and hopefully we'll find some kind of resolution as to what, what what's going what's going to come here because it's really iffy right now. Again, if interest rates continue to rise, you know, at some point the Fed's going to have to intervene. If they don't, <laughs> and if it does intervene, then that's going to you know suppress credit growth, uh, stock buybacks, right? If it doesn't and just lets it run, <laughs> Mark is going to start to tank. So, you know, pick your poison. Pick your poison. Uh, so, anyway, we'll figure it all out. Uh, again, don't forget, patreon.com slash real macro. Uh, and also, uh, don't forget, uh, I'm starting up back BKC, which is more focused towards individual stocks. Okay, BKC. BKC, right? 9.95 per month. Just focus on chart patterns and chart and uh, um, and stocks, okay? Uh, some forex, of course, and, and whatever. But uh, I won't be doing so much of the macro stuff. All right. So uh, that's it, guys. Uh, thank you again, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.